My name is John Sinnott. I'm the chairman of the Department of Internal Medicine at the Marsani College of Medicine at the University of South Florida. We have a thriving Department of Internal Medicine, and I'm eager to tell everyone I can about it, but especially new faculty recruits, uh, trainees we're recruiting, and medical student applicants. I'm going to share a podcast with you that details our successes in teaching, research, and education. I want to thank you ahead of time for taking a few minutes to watch this podcast and gather information about what a wonderful Department of Medicine we have and how we work together as a team of happy colleagues. Thank you. Here we see in the upper left USF Medical School at its inception. And in the lower right hand corner, we see a vision that will be finished in 2019 or 2020. This dramatic change really parallels changes within the Department of Internal Medicine. Let me share some of them with you. Our mission, and you can certainly read along with me, is to provide superb clinical care, educate with excellence, pursue research with passion, and this will be our national reputation. Traditionally, the stool of medical learning is teaching, research, and patient care. But I think many of you wouldn't recognize this stool, first put forth by Abraham Flexner. Uh, instead, I think many of you would see it more like this. Here you see a giant front wheel, which is the clinical practice with research and teaching, perhaps more on the two back wheels. Part of my job at USF is to change the culture and make sure all these wheels are the same size. When we look at how we ended up with our pink tricycle, we can look at our well-meaning and many very gifted deans, but each of whom brought a different description of what success was to the medical school. Some wanted to build surgery, some wanted clinical excellence, some wanted family practice. So as a result, we've ended up with a cobbled together pink tricycle. One of the most important legs of the stool is that of research. It's the hardest to build and the hardest to maintain. Gifted researchers, will exhibit a blend of creativity and insight that is a unique gift. Here you see that we have a vector-borne program for malaria, probably one of the top five in the world. And that is eventually going to evolve into a Human Pathogen Institute. Back in 2013, my assessment was that our faculty had substantial clinical strength with local recognition. Our educational programs were not well organized and research was inadequate. What's happened? We increased our residents from 86 to 138. We increased our fellowship from 65 to 90. We changed our faculty. We increased our faculty from around 85 to 190, and additionally, we have 11 to 12, actually 16, uh, core research faculty added to that. Our staff has stayed about the same as we attempt to minimize overheads and invest in our future growth. One of the medical students wrote in the evaluation to the AAMC that USF is not an elite school. I was troubled by that because the individual didn't know how to describe an elite school. What describes an elite school are numbers. And as Einstein tells us, if we understand something, we can put a number on it. 
As you notice, this is a repeat visit. I've structured this almost like a patient history. In teaching, the AAMC ranks the Department of Internal Medicine at USF in the top 4% in the country. Research is ranked 19 out of 173 medical schools. We have $78 million in NIH grants now. I anticipate this will be close to $90 million this time next year. Clinically, using US News and World Report surveys of 5,500 hospitals, Tampa General Hospital was ranked 28th in endocrinology, 18th in nephrology, 24th in gastroenterology, and 48th in pulmonary. Received an honorable mention in geriatric care. Now, social forces impact all of us who practice medicine. We're in a, an unusual transition period now that we've worked very hard to address. Three years ago, we were paid for volume. If you did three bronchoscopies, you got three times the money you did for one. In the future, we will be paid for value. The philosophical problem is value means different things to different people. To most of us in medicine, that would mean better health outcomes, lower costs, increased population health. But many parts of industry would see this as value to the patient. Thus, we see obscene prices as a, a cure is invaluable. People will pay anything to get better. We have to figure out a way to manage that, but much of that is up to our politicians and not us. In our response and how to deal with this, we have excelled by developing a patient-centered medical home We've been meeting all of the Medicare criteria for improved health delivery. And we have a staff that is on the cutting edge of how to deliver quality care. It was stated a while back that culture defeats strategy at every time. To change the culture we needed to go from a confederacy of 14 to 15 different divisions to a union, a, a union where we would be a team of teams. We began in 2013 with strategic planning. We opened communications between divisions. I held multiple small group meetings to tell everyone where we were headed. We became more aggressive with promotion. I became very involved in graduate medical education and changed some areas of the office to make them more user-friendly, as you'll see on the right-hand side of the slide. On the physical examination of our department, we find that we have 14 divisions, all are ACGME certified. In 2013, we had seven researchers with about 1 million in grants and 83 clinicians. Now we have 17 researchers with 78 million in NIH grants and 188 clinicians. I'm ably helped in this effort by my three vice chairs, Dr. Jeffrey Krischer, Dr. Joseph Lazama, and Dr. Asa Oxner. The diagnosis that we're working under is saltatory progress. We move ahead some, then we slow down, then we move ahead. The treatment I'm prescribing is clear goals. As I mentioned earlier, for teaching, we're in the top 4% by the AAMC, the American Association of Medical Colleges, and the American Board of Internal Medicine Board Pass Rate has a three-year average of 99%. We've essentially had one individual in the last three years not pass the boards. That's one of the best averages in the country. 
This looks at the change in the residency program. You see in virtually every dimension, we're expanding, and we continue to expand. I anticipate a 25% further expansion over the next three to four years. In graduate medical education, a lot of teaching isn't just teaching patient care or teaching content knowledge about diseases. It's teaching people how to write grants or abstracts or publications. And this shows our success in resident abstracts, which is totally due to Dr. Kelly Aller, our internal medicine program director. Under her leadership, we have gone from 60 to 116 abstracts, and from resident publications to almost none to 46. In the curriculum, we have increased primary care exposure to respond to needs in the, nationally. And to do that, we transitioned to the block system of X plus Y, and we added structured didactic time. We have a number of new rotations. They're listed here. Some of the more exciting ones are the lung transplantation team, palliative care, ambulatory HIV, and general outpatient medicine. When we look at our trainees, we realize that if we want to take care of patients, we have to take care of ourselves. No other profession needs that more than medicine. What do we do? We have intern coaching. When interns are tired, dysphoric, not performing well, we coach them. It's not punitive, it's positive, and it's aimed towards them achieving more balance. We also have, to help with this, the VA Thrive Program, which Dr. Lazama as vice chair put together, which is a series of wellness conducted monthly. We also have IM Cares, where staff receive a physical examination, blood pressure, cholesterol levels from senior medical students. In professional development, we have a scholars council, a leadership council, a mentoring program uh, that we're very proud of and we find highly effective. This slide would not be complete without mentioning our critical affiliates. The James A. Haley VA Hospital is one of 15 five-star VA hospitals in the United States. It's also the busiest VA hospital in the United States. Director Battle, Dr. Lazama, have done a wonderful job making this one of the best learning experiences any student or resident could ask for. Our second extraordinarily strong partner is the H. Lee Moffitt Cancer Center. The Moffitt Cancer Center is a National Cancer Institute and is currently ranked number six in the United States for cancer care. I believe it's the second or third busiest National Cancer Institute in the nation. As basic research progresses, we need to move it to the bedside. And to do that, we need translational medicine and clinical projects. This lists some outstanding faculty it emphasizes our commitment to basic research with the Blue Ridge rankings. The site is brimr.org. I encourage you to go there and take a look. In this translational realm, we've engaged in a number of sponsored research projects, had a number of clinical NIH grants awarded, and in the past year published 187 papers, had six patents, applied for, and 54 NIH proposals submitted, and finally in the past year published a book. For patient-centered care, we talked about how well 
Tampa General Hospital was doing, but we're also doing well. This list doctors listed in Best Doctors in America. What are some accomplishments we're especially proud of? In the past three years, we've grown a hospitalist program from zero to 48 hospitalists. We've developed one of the busiest lung transplant programs in the South. We have a committed cardiothoracic ICU team and an extended ICU intensivist program. We have interventional pulmonary at H. Lee Moffitt Cancer Hospital. And under Dr. Kapil Patel, who we recruited from Stanford, we're developing a center for advanced lung disease. Additionally, we have nocturnus in internal medicine and pulmonary critical care medicine. All of this is in a setting of outstanding teaching. The outstanding clerkship, Dr. Kevin O'Brien. Outstanding humanist, Dr. Dennis Ledford. Most outstanding clinical teacher, Dr. Robert Ledford. For an academic medical center to thrive, there are a number of factors that have to be taken into account. One of them is the relationship with the hospital. People often identify a medical school with the affiliated undergraduate institution. But more often, I like to view medical schools as affiliated with hospitals because, after all, we are teaching how to take care of patients. The future has never been brighter. Our Center for Advanced Lung Disease is well underway. Interventional pulmonary medicine is now routinely practiced. We have our Center for Vector-Borne Disease and the Human Pathogens Institute in the future. Cardiology is being folded back into internal medicine and will help grow clinical research. We have a diversity initiative. Recall when you think diversity, people often think of race issues, but we also seek diversity of thought. We're working on an international global health fellowship. And finally, we've increased our emphasis on our greatest resource, our residents. So we're stressing wellness and life balance to our residents. What we're going to do is we're going, we're actually in the process of becoming a learning organization. You can read the concept here. To quote Ari DeJayas, the ability to learn faster than your competitors may be the only sustainable competitive advantage. And that's what we intend to do. I want to finish up with a quote from the poet T.S. Eliot. He tells us we know too much and believe too little. I would make a point that right now, you know a great deal about the Department of Internal Medicine at the Morsani College of Medicine. I encourage you not only to believe what you've just seen, but to act on it and become part of our team. Please follow us on these sites. Sign up, become part of the team. Thank you. Thank you very much for looking at our podcast and hopefully learning from it. I want to invite you to join us, not just on our social uh, sites, uh, I also wanted you to think about joining us as a faculty member, a trainee, or a student. It's a wonderful place to work and a wonderful profession. Have a good day.